The White House playing defense amid a nationwide shortage of baby formula and now announcing steps to fight the shortage. White House press secretary saying that the administration is looking at cutting red tape to speed up production. Uh, Jen Psaki addressing concerns again today on her last day in the job, pushing back on the claims that the administration has dragged its feet. So what we have done since the day after the recall was announced, uh, we actually took steps working with these producers uh, and working with states to ensure both, one, we were pushing states and encouraging them to expand flexibility as it relates to WIC, which is, again, the biggest ask of most people we talk to. And then we've been working with manufacturers. And that has resulted in Gerber increasing production by 50 percent, on Ricketts increasing production by 30 percent. Joining us now, Deputy Editor of Restoring America for the Washington Examiner, Kaylee McGee-White. Hi, Kaylee. What? Hey, how are you guys? Fantastic. And let's just dive right into this. Of course, one of the hottest topics, the biggest topics, kind of a scary topic at this point. What's your take on what Jen Psaki says on her last day on Friday the 13th? Well, like most of what Saki has said, uh, her statement is simply not true. The Biden administration has dragged its feet on this issue because this shortage started back in February with the Abbott recall. And yet this week is the first time that we are hearing anything about it from the Biden administration. So it has been three months of parents scrambling to find baby formula. Um, often the formulas that are are really hard to find right now are specialty ones from infants who have gastrointestinal issues or allergy issues where they're dependent on just one kind. So this has been going on for months now. So why are we just now hearing about it from the White House now? Yeah, and also the uh, Congress, I believe, is going to have a hearing on this on the 24th. Now, if I'm a parent of a kid who needs baby formula, and by the way, that's millions of people. I mm -hmm. mean, that's a big business. And, and if you have empty shelves, Waiting another week and a half yeah, uh, days, seems yeah. kind of silly. They're not taking it seriously. Absolutely. And the FDA's response has been, uh, you know, just as lackluster as the White House's. The FDA has actually insisted that there is no shortage of formula because companies are ramping up production, which is apparently supposed to be, you know, easing parents' minds on this. And yet when they go to a Target, when they go to a Walmart or when they go online to Amazon, they can't find what they need. So for the Biden administration not to treat this seriously like the crisis that it is, is really insulting to millions of families. Now, you mentioned, Kately, that, you know, this is something that the administration knew about months ago. So, again, the question still keeps coming back. Well, why didn't they plan for it? Why weren't they proactive? And, of course, as we're also hearing about these pallets of baby formula uh, showing up at the border for, um, you know, illegal immigrants, uh, couldn't they have managed this better? Absolutely. That is a great question. Why was the Biden administration not prepared? Why is baby formula not one of the things that the FDA tracks regularly to make sure that shortages don't occur? There are so many policy solutions that could have prevented this crisis from occurring from the very start that the Biden administration just did not do. And as a result, they weren't prepared for this, even after the Abbott recall that left uh, you know, the supply chain crisis even worse than it was before. Yeah. Kaylee, uh, last day for Jen Psaki. Any thoughts on her outgoing or the incoming person, uh, Karine Jean-Pierre? Well, I don't think that we should have high expectations for the incoming press secretary, just like we didn't very have high expectations for Psaki. This is a Democratic administration, and they're going to defend all of Biden's actions, even if those actions are not good for the country. And so I think that's more of the same that we can expect. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kaylee McKee-White, thanks for being with us. Thank you.